A family many years ago testified they bless water to eat with thanksgiving for dinner. Father, thank you for this water. Parents and children drank water to bear. Following day, two bags of rice arrived at their door. Nobody knew. Thanksgivers never get stranded. Hi guys, this is Emeka Anselm and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. So just in case you missed the mega con on the 80th birthday of our mama at Bishop Margaret Idaus, I think you must have missed a lot. God servant Bishop David Redeco was there and he gave a very powerful sermon. So watch his message and be blessed. Cheers. Thank you Jesus for a very successful mega con. Thank you for what you have done for us. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the powerful ministers that have ministered to us. Thank you for the light they have shed on our heart. Lord, receive our thanks in Jesus' name. And today is your precious daughter's birthday. Jesus, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the grace you have granted her. Thank you for your good hand upon her life. Thank you for everything that speaks of your glory. Take all the praise in Jesus' name. Now speak to us this morning, Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand and please be seated. I want to especially congratulate our mother today for this awesome gift of life. Life is not a right. Life is a gift. No one did anything to appear here. We landed here all by grace. We came to life all by grace. Nobody played a part to be born. Nobody, none of us, played any part to be born. Life is not a right. Life is a gift. That's the root of a thankful life when you know it is all the gift of God. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Before you came forth from the womb, I separated you to what you would do in life. No, it's all a gift. Before the two were born, God made his choice. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. They haven't done nothing. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. That's where the journey begins. Recognizing that we are just an embodiment of God's grace. I speak to this subject for the few minutes we have. We owe God thanks. It's a debt we owe. It's a debt we must pay. We owe God thanks. The celebrant of today owes God thanks. All we wish as you have come to celebrate with us, we owe God thanks. In the kingdom of God, success, exploits, are not achievements. They are mere engracements. Engracements. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. Behind every great happening in any life is the grace of God. No one can be any more than the grace of God makes him. We owe God thanks. We owe God thanks 
and we are here to give God thanks for the life of our mother, the Archbishop Margaret Benson Rahosa, who turns 80 today. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. But what is in thanksgiving? People get weary about certain things because they don't know what virtues are in it. What is in thanksgiving? Number one, preservation of God's blessings. You want his blessings preserved, give him thanks. He said, this commandment to you, O ye priests, Malachi chapter 3, verse, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. If you will not hear and lay to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord, I will cross your blessings. Thankless people hardly sustain God's blessings. Thankless people hardly <laughs> sustain God's blessings. But if you will not hear, he said, I will spread dung upon your faces and one will take you captive. So it's not a thing you have to feel like, it's a thing you must do. It's a thing we must do. Blessings are cheaply reversible when you don't know how to preserve them. You may have three bags of tomato, baskets of tomato today. By next tomorrow, you don't have anything again. It's gone because it's not preserved. It's gone because it's not preserved. Many have seen blessings before, but they can't see it anymore because they are thankless. You don't thank God for small, you won't see big. You don't thank Him for big, you won't see bigger. You don't thank Him for bigger, you won't see biggest. It is thanksgiving that multiplies those things back to us. In Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 15 to 17, Jeremiah 13, he talks about not just giving, he said, Here, ye and give here, be not proud. For the Lord has spoken. What has the Lord spoken? Give glory to the Lord your God before he causes darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while you look for light, it turns into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. He said, but if you will not hear, my soul shall weep for you in secret places for your pride. So behind thanklessness is pride. You see something, man, what is this after all? I mean, what is this after all? I share with you yesterday that I have given testimony of 200 naira in my life. See how God is blessing me. I've given testimony of 500 naira in my life, but that's not where I am now. You better wake up. Let's wake up and be thankful. We are not here by right. It's a gift of God. We owe God thanks if we want our blessings preserved. Number two, what is in thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a mystery that multiplies God's blessings in our life. We saw that in John chapter 6 when Jesus gave thanks for two fishes and five loaves of bread. And it multiplied supernaturally. Thanksgivers never go down, sir. Thanksgivers never go down. They keep enjoying the grace of multiplication in their lives. Philip said, what is that? Among so many people. Jesus said, you don't know what it is. Bring it. Let me show you what is in it. Father, I thank you. Um, multiplication took place. You know why food finishes in our stores? We are thankless. Water, fish, finished. Water, finished. Oil, finished. You finish it yourself. You use your mouth to finish it. Father, I thank you. A family many years ago testified, <laughs> they bless water to eat with thanksgiving for dinner. Father, thank you for this water. Parents and children drank water to bed. Following day, 
two bags of rice arrived at their door. Nobody knew. Thanksgivers never get stranded. Thanksgivers multiply God's hand in our lives. May we all become addicted to a life of thanksgiving from today in the name of Jesus. One of my sons was reminding me, he said, 1989, you were giving testimonies in our pastor's meeting that can't you see the way God is blessing me? I mean, I, I get blessed about a thousand naira every week. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that amazing? I wasn't nagging God. I wasn't flattering God. I was celebrating him. Is that where I am today? If you don't want to stay there for too long, give God thanks. Give God thanks for where you are. Give, give him thanks intentionally. Give him thanks consciously. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. It's a vital mystery of the kingdom. Number three, what is in thanksgiving? Perfection of God's blessings. Perfection. Perfection. That one leper returned. And Jesus said, well, they are not ten cleansed. They are not returned, but this Samaritan. So he's counting those who return. God is counting those who return. When you don't return with thanks for what he does, you have asked him, stay your hand, I'm okay. Stay your hand, I can handle it better than you. When that one returned, he said, you are made whole. So in thanksgiving lies the perfection of God's blessings in our life. Perfection, perfection. And the Lord wants to perfect all things that concern us. Psalm 138 and verse 8. He wants to perfect. How will he perfect? Through the mystery of thanksgiving as a way of life. The mystery of thanksgiving as a way of life. The first time my wife came to our church, because our church ministry began in Kaduna, she couldn't believe service was over. We were 21 that day. It was a great service. She couldn't marry that with the way I used to return back home after every weekend meeting. What? And God bless us that day, we were two about the previous Sunday. We were 19 previous Sunday. She added to it, making uh, 20, and somebody else came, making 21. Thanksgiving, 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 it went to 50. Thanksgiving to 100. Thanksgiving to 200. Thanksgiving to 500. Sir, don't let God turn his back on you. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Somebody asked me many years ago, he said, I learned that you got a car, brother David. I said, yes, God gave me a fantastic car. I said, did I hear his Volkswagen B2? I said, yes. And deal like this. If riding a Volkswagen car is riding a car. It was fantastic to me. Fantastic. The gift of God. But well, one day, this short man gave out 23 cars. One day. As gifts. From one rickety Volkswagen B2 that people even preach against. People, they say, why would they preach for so They need to ride a car. They need to ride a good car. One day, the same short boy with one rickety Volkswagen B2 gave out 23 cars at a go. Jesus will change your story. Yeah. Allow him to do it. Now, watch. It's a good thing to give thanks, Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2, unto God, and to sing his praises out of a thankful heart. To show forth his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. And what will happen? Verse 10. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. There's a fresh oil mystery in thanksgiving. The more thankful a believer, the fresher the oil on his life. The more thankful a believer, the fresher the oil on his life. Don't let the oil on your head go stay. You complain about everything, 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 everything. You even come to say nothing is working. What? And you are talking. Your mouth is working. 
Your brain is working. Your heart is working. Your lungs are working. He said, nothing is working. It's an insult on God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You mean God who kept you night and day, he never slept, you said nothing is working? God, I don't believe you are keeping anybody. No, 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 nothing is working. What is happening? His tire got, I mean, he had flat tire. Nothing is working. What happened? His car broke down. Nothing. Who dash monkey banana? Were you born with a car? Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Don't let the oil on your head go dry. Be thankful. Be, it's, be thankful. It's the way out. In everything, give thanks. They may not look like what you are looking for, but give thanks if they must look like it at all. Give thanks to make them become what you are looking for. You don't give thanks, they can't become it. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. First Timothy 1, I mean, First Thessalonians 5, 18. And Hebrews 10, 36 said, and when you have done the will of God, you will obtain the promise. So we give thanks to God in all things. In all things. We were going to Kaduna one time and my car broke down. It used to break it down. So I went, because it was its silence and I brought that came out. I went under to see if I could get something to tie it. Then my hand touched the silence, a hot silence. The first thing that came, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is this? Never ask God why. On any, you stay long. Job was asking why, why, why. You stay long. You can ask God questions. Don't question God. You can ask him questions, but don't question him. Don't ever question God. It will drain your thanksgiving attitude. Don't ever question God. Is always working in your favor and my favor, whether we know it or not. He's still working. He's on duty. This is where I like. Fresh oil is in thanksgiving. David, the thanksgiver said, God said concerning David, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. The enemy shall not exert upon him. The son of the shall not afflict him. I will plague his enemies before his face. I'm Plague all that hate him. Fresh oil pertains to thanksgivers. Psalm 89, 20 to 24. Fresh oil. You want the oil on your hair to be fresh? Get out of the company of murmurers. Get out of their company. They will, they will drain you. They will drain you complete. Everything. See the road. See the I mean, so what can you do about it now? Life in the kingdom and on this side of Jordan, they are not the same. Oh. They are not the same. If you cross over to Benin Republic here today, you come under that constitution immediately. <laughs> the Nigerian police cannot arrest you there because you are off our territory. When you leave this natural kingdom to the kingdom of God, there are rules that guide it. They that murmured in the wilderness were destroyed. They were not assisted. They were destroyed. The oil on them went dry. So the enemy could afflict them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. And in <laughs> Numbers 21, the people complained. And God had it. It displeased God. And he sent plague into the camp. May everything complaining anyone here come to an end here today. May you go back with the baptism of the spirit of thanksgiving. May thanksgiving become your way of life from now. Yes. Now, finally, what is in thanksgiving? Divine presence. My God, the greatest asset of any believer. We come enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That is the protocol of access to God's presence. You enter into his gates you come to his gate with thanksgiving, you enter into his court, praising, and we get through to its presence. In the inner most court, with thanksgiving and worship. He said in Psalm 100, verse 4, 
Let us come enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Our access through his gate is thanksgiving. You are more money, get off. You are complaining, go somewhere else. You can't access his, you can't access his gate. You can't pass through his gate without thanksgiving. And into his cause with praise. Oshim, Oshim, Baba. Oshim, 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 Baba. Shemina, Reolua, Shemina, Reolua. And you enter into his presence, thanking and blessing him. So, thanksgiving to begin, thanksgiving to assess the utmost presence of God. There is no murmur who can carry his presence. There is no complaint who can carry his presence. I returned from a trip years ago and I learned that my car was taken away by some unknown fellows. And I said, hey, I hope the security men are okay. They say, yes, they're okay. They say, in fact, one of them went with them. That means they arranged it. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, somebody sitting in front of the car had no idea that anything went off. So he was now trying to talk to me when we were about getting home about the car. I said, no, no, I've heard about it. It, it, it stunned him till tomorrow that there was no noise, there was no yelling. It ended there. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Relax. You don't want to put God off because when God gets off your back, nothing works. When God takes his hand off our life, nothing works. So we owe God thanks. You wake up in the morning, I slept and I woke because the Lord sustained me. Father, I thank you. You know how to fight when you are awake. What about when you are asleep? Who is fighting your battle? Mama, for 80 years, you slept, you woke up. You slept, you woke up. You slept, you woke up. We owe God thanks on your behalf. And you owe God thanks as a person, which you do always. Please, let this become what accompanies our spiritual life. Thanksgiving. I, I drove with um, a friend of mine, Mike Murdoch, and he said to me, he said, between the town and the campus, you have said, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, 72 times. You know, he has a way of counting things. He said, I was wondering whether we were even following what we are discussing or not. 72, it's an addiction. And it's adding value to my life every day. Please take it on. Be thankful. At that time, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord God of heaven. I thank you. I thank you. Jesus. Never run short. A thanksgiving addict. And it's our example. Let's be th thank God for that room. It will soon become two. Thank God for that two room, room and parlor. It will soon become a flat. Thank God for that flat. It will soon become a mansion. You are going somewhere. If you know how to get there, and you decide to go by it, you get there in no time. We all got thanks on daily basis. Particularly of celebrate bad days that he kept us between the year before and the new year. We all got thanks. We all got thanks. So don't see Thanksgiving in a church as, uh, you know, uh, offering collections. We are, we are just showing God our gratitude. It, it shouldn't be end of the year. It should be every time. Thanking God for his act. And having a schedule of thanksgiving is not, uh, it's not anything absurd. It's normal. So that all the people that have bad days during that month and all that, they become conscious. I need to thank God who has kept me till now. You got a job. How? Everybody that went to school with you, did they all come out? How many of them are alive now? You all got thanks. Those who are smarter than you, did they get a job to do? And yet, 
Jesus chose to honor you. Please, let's be thankful. For the celebrant of today, we are all thankful on your behalf that grace has led you to this point. We are thankful that your eyes are saying these things today. We are thankful that the will of the enemy did not succeed in your life. We are thankful. That's kept you healthy and agile and you are moving. We are thankful. That has protected you and the entire family. We are thankful. That the church of God is still growing and moving and advancing. We are thankful to God. That the word of life has not failed in your mouth. We are thankful. That you are still standing strong in the faith. We are thankful. That you still have all of us around you at this time. We are thankful. That you are never alone for once in your life. We are thankful. For all the leadership of the church that has been standing firm. We are thankful. For all the ones who are adding value to this ministry all their life. We are thankful. And I pray that today will be a day that each of us here in this assembly will remember. That you oh God. Can I have you say with me? I owe God thanks. I owe God thanks. And I know why I owe God thanks. I don't want to miss these virtues. So help me, Jesus, to remain ever thankful. Even when things appear not to be working. If I must see them work, I must give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Help me give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Now, I'm going to close with one verse of scriptures, Habakkuk chapter 3, and verse 17 to 19, and I'd like us to take it home. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, there shall not be fruit in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the flock shall yield no milk. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no How in the storm? Yet, come on, say yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And the Lord will show up and make my feet like hands feet and get me up upon my higher places. That's where you are going. Shall we rise to our feet?